we got jungle for now. We've got India. I'm actually really excited to check out this video. A lot of you guys have recommended this one for me to watch. Let's see what India's got in store for us. I know it's going to be a lot, so, uh, so yeah, let's jump into this. Upon the giant India. Some of you have been waiting a long time for this episode. I'm just going to say straight up. You all know India is incredibly complex and diverse. Even Indians have trouble understanding their own country. Obviously, I won't be able to scratch oh, for sure. in this episode, but I'll try my best. A lot of you Indian geography peeps have helped me along the way, so thank you. And without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be a good one, man. Geography. No! Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Barbie. This place doesn't even need much of an introduction. Everybody has heard of India. It's big. It's loud. It's colorful. And most important... I will be very surprised if someone hasn't heard of India, bro. <laughs> it has a plethora of confusing territorial anomalies that I just can't wait to cover. Here we go. There's an old saying, India is a place where everyone is in a hurry, but no one is ever on time. First of all, uh, India is located in South Asia, right on the Indian and Arabian Seas and the Bay of Bengal, bordered by six other countries. So close to seven, but that land bridge between Sri Lanka got wiped away like 600 years ago by a cyclone. Uh, the United States and seven union territories with the capital New Delhi, which acts as its own administrative unit. Oh, wow, in cool. Territory. Keep in mind, New Delhi is actually just the name of one of the districts in the capital territory made up of 11. The largest city, however, is actually Mumbai with New Delhi. Bangalore or Bengaluru. And you know what? I don't even know what the capital of India is. I'm not gonna lie. Following after, however, the four busiest airports are Delhi Indira Gandhi International, Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji International, Bengaluru's Kempe Golda International, and Chennai International in the south. Ah, uh, you know why I'm smiling. This is my favorite part of any episode we ever make. What Territorial is it? anomaly time. India is loaded <laughs> with strange borders and deliciously oh, complex. Oh, these goddamn anomalies! First of all, what exactly is a union territory? In the simplest way I can put this, union territories are places that are too distinct to be incorporated into a state, but too small to have their own local governments. Huh? This one, of course, is the Delhi National Capital Territory, where the capital lies. Chandigarh is a post-independent city constructed to replace Lahore as the capital of the Punjab area after it was split up between India and Pakistan. Then you have the island territories, the smallest one, Lakshadweep, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman Islands being home to one of the last uncontacted people groups on the planet, the Sentinelese tribe, whom have been hostile to... Oh, I've seen a video on the Sentinelese tribe. Oh my god, yeah. Visitors and are there That's there? Alone, as well as the Nicobar Islands, which actually used to be a short-lived colony of Denmark. Finally, the three remaining territories are former European colony towns and ports. Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu, which are separated I by- I swear the Indian, like, military don't allow anyone near the island. Like, they're just leaving it uncontacted. The and the most confusing Union territory, the French-speaking Puducherry, which is actually split up between four district cities across India. Karikal, Bro, there's so Bahe, many. Yanaon, and Pondicherry. Pondicherry is strange because it has 11 enclaves within the Tamil Nadu state. Oh, and in this area, you can also find... Oh, my God. Enclaves, man. They're, bro, I don't understand why there's so many in other countries. It, it is so confusing. Just... Just let the other country claim the land or something, man. <laughs> experimental hippie-ish commune with a little bit of controversy. Look it up. Oh, and don't forget here. Wait, what was that? The experimental strange because it has 11 enclaves within the Tamil Nadu state. Oh, and in this area, you can also find the experimental hippie-ish commune with a little bit of controversy. Look it up. Oh, and don't forget here. The <laughs> oh, Eastern bless states, me. Also known as the Seven Sisters are connected by this incredibly narrow 27 kilometer wide pathway known as the Siliguri Corridor. This cool. pathway is like a crucial artery that completes the India puzzle. Or so you would think. Now let's Let's discuss the juicy stuff. Now, in the China episode, I already talked about the disputed areas with India, such as Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh. The latter pretty much just belong to India episode. as it's almost completely inhabited and operated by Indians. So let's move to the other disputes. Now, as of 2015, the Bangladesh episode is already outdated as India and Bangladesh have finally come to an agreement over the frighteningly complex former enclave-exclave dispute. In the end, nice. India lost about 40 square kilometers of land to Bangladesh, and now only a few enclaves and exclaves exist. Now let's head... North. Now you got, hey, to you gotta get rid of these fucking exclaves, enclaves, enclaves, do claves, whatever claves, man. You gotta get rid of them. They're so confusing. With India, you might want to be careful which depiction you use. Some might use this picture, some might use this, some might use this, and those that don't really study very well might use this. The point is, the whole. This picture, what? Some might use this, some might use this, and those that don't. Aye, aye, the other three are like, they're really similar, and then you jump to this. Well, might use this. Bro, that's Italy, bro. This, some might use this. And and those that don't really study very well might use this. Oh, he's taking the piss. It is Italy. 
The point is, the whole area is like the most heavily militarized, diplomatically stressed out region on the planet. It's already had like four wars in the past half century. Basically, oh my India, God. Pakistan, and to some extent China all want the entire area for themselves, although it's more of like a Pakistan-India thing. In the China episode, we already discussed the Chinese disputes with India, so I won't cover those in this episode. China just wants to get involved, don't I? China episode. But anyway, this entire area was a former domain known as the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that was under royal Maharaja rulers all the way up until independence. Currently, this place is split up by this fenced off military line known as the line of control between India and Pakistan. Right. Why is this? Well, in the quickest way I can put this, okay, the British are out. We get to take your land. Uh, no, we want to be an independent princely state. Uh, we're supposed to take your land, and majority of your people are Muslim, just like us, even though your ruler is Hindu as well. Hey, India? Yeah? If you help me, I'll let you secede my territory to your land with autonomy. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Your problem now! I love how Mike played India. He totally represents India. Oh, and keep in mind, Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, is less than 80 kilometers away from all that drama. The line is that what actually happened? Oh my god, wait, hold on. NJ less than 80 oh wow, I, did, I didn't realize Afghanistan was so close to Pakistan, India, and China. What the fuck? I thought it was like... Actually, I didn't know where it was. I thought it was like close to like Turkey. Anna. I'm not very good at jumping, that's why I watch control these. meanders through the mountains until it stops at a point called NJ9842. This is where things get really crazy, because from there you hit the Siachen Glacier, the second longest non-polar glacier in the world, and this is pretty much the dead man zone. After point NJ9842, right. you hit the actual ground position line, a series of military outposts that extend all the way to the Chinese border. That means everything in this area is ground zero for the Indo-Pak tension. And you know, the crazy thing is there's actually literally small towns of normal, regular civilians living in these areas high up in the mountains. Many of huh? just go about daily life, going to work and raising their families. Otherwise, they have a river dispute with Nepal and various river islands disputed with Bangladesh. Outside of all the dispute stuff though, India not only has the world's second largest road network and three of the world's top 10 mega cities and their own space program, but they also have a copious abundance of landmarks and notable sites, way too many to list. But some of the ones that you guys, the Indian geography peeps have told me to mention include places like the abandoned Danush Kodi ghost city, Gokanda Fort, cool. the four That's pillars cool. of Charmina, That's the cool. Buddhist art caves, the That's Alora cool. Monolithic ruins, oh my God. Fortress, the Golden Temple, which feeds over 100,000 people a day, the Golgotha Mausoleum, the Kalabantin Durg Post, wow. the ruins of Hampi, the hill forts of Rajasthan. Oh man, Chakran India is so Hill, cool. Like oh, that's so the sick. Cities, ruins of Hampi, the hill. Oh, they look so cool. What the hell, man? Forts of Rajasthan, Shatrunjaya Hill, wow. which is basically like a mecca for Jains. The Temple of the Bodhi Tree, Jal Mahal, Bangart Fort, the most haunted place in India, Mahabat Makbara. And keep in mind, just like in China, you can find a Great Wall of India in Rajasthan. Oh my god, I never knew that. Anjanea Temple with the largest statue in India depicting Hanuman. And at over 150 acres, the Sri Rangan Ataswami Temple, the largest Hindu temple in the world. Oh, yeah, and there's shit. also that building with the stuff and the thing, whatever. Anyway, we could go on. Yeah, I've seen that building loads. Constructed domicile, but what it lies on top of is even more fascinating. Now, don't make this mistake. I'm going to India. What mistake? All I need are my sandals and sunscreen. Oh. <laughs> as the seventh largest country in land area, India has a wide range of landscapes, climates, and elevations that all contrast from one corner to the other. First of all, let's talk about the north. India sits on the Indian tectonic plate that essentially smashed into the Eurasian plate, which in return created the largest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas. The force is so strong that it's estimated that the Himalayas grow about 2.4 inches or 6.1 centimeters every year. There's also wow. where you can find Kanchenjunga, the tallest mountain in India, or the third in the world, right on the border of Nepal. Keep your eye on these mountains. These are pretty much the source of most of India's major rivers that give life to the whole country. That's why India takes these mountains so seriously. You can also find the largest natural lake, Ular, up in the Jammu Kashmir area. Below the Himalayas, you reach the North Indian River Plain, sometimes referred to as the Indus Ganga. This is the most fertile part of India where the most important rivers like the Ganges and its tributaries flow. Heading a little south, you reach the Satpura and Vindhya ranges that pretty much divide North India from South India. On each side, you get the West and East Ghat Mountains, which in return creates this massive triangle thing called the Deccan Plateau. This place is moderately forest, especially in the East, in the Chotra Nagpur plateau where you get a section of the swampy Sundarbans that they share with Bangladesh. Check out the Bangladesh episode. Head cool. over to the west and you get the dry tar desert along the border with Pakistan as well as the run of... Kuhu where Kuhu. is it snowing in India? Salt desert. And finally, the only active volcanic area would be the Adaman and Nicobar Islands with Barren Island having actual conical eruptions and Bharatan having tame mud volcanoes. Oh my. Area, the Adaman and Nicobar oh my god, that's beautiful. Oh my days, that's beautiful.
Oh, and, wait, is that, uh, that, he said that's an active volcano Island, as well? With Barren Island having actual conical eruptions and Baratan having tame mud volcanoes. Oh, now, shit. Thing, although India has a relatively high population density, they do relatively well Everyone maintaining knows. their ecological footing. In fact, in 2016, they beat a world record by planting, disputably, 50 million trees in one day. They've also agreed to reforest about 12% of their country by 2030. The most heavily forested area being the seven sister states in East India. Now, one of the factors that contributes to this would be the fact that India has the lowest meat consumption in the world with the highest population percentage of vegetarians at around 40 percent most of whom are lactic that consume milk products by the way in india when buying groceries this label means vegetarian and this one means not vegetarian nonetheless the remainder of the population Sick. does oh. typically eat some kind of animal protein mostly in the forms of indian is one of my favorite foods oh this is gonna be oh this is gonna tease me i'm gonna see what time is it right now it is 9 a.m right i've not eaten i've not had anything just woke up oh don't, please seafood or chicken, but almost never beef or pork unless if you are part of the Muslim or Christian minorities scattered throughout the West and East areas. Now, right. let's talk about the role of cattle, shall we? India has more cattle and livestock than anywhere else in the world at around 330 million. And it's interesting because Holy since they have shit. Hindu traditions, the killing of cows is illegal in many of the states except for a few, and each state has varying degrees of punishment for committing intentional cow slaughter. Keyword wow. intentional. Cows accidentally get hit by cars all the time. Once a cow is too old to produce milk, it typically is released into the open to die naturally in the wild. Ideal Nonetheless, male cattle get it much worse as the they fuck? are deemed as kind of useless. Some places use them as draft animals for labor. Some religious sects use them as sacrifices. But otherwise, they are typically sold to the underground market for beef or hides. To this day, there are about six times as many female cows as male cattle in India. So that means, yeah, something's happening to the males. Nonetheless, India does have the third highest carbon emission rate after China and the US, fourth if you consider the EU. However, emission per capita, they rank pretty low at only about two kilotons per person. Contrast that with Qatar at about 40. There are nine 94 national parks, 501 animal sanctuaries across the country where you can find some of the national animals like the peacock, the Ganges River dolphin, the king cobra, the Indian elephant, and the highest population of Bengal tigers in the world. Man, yo, all... India is just like flooded with coolness. Like, th th that's the best way to explain it. Like, the the um, the um places you have, the landmarks you have, um if you're from india it's really cool the animals you have is really cool like it, it, it actually is india also has the most irrigated land in the world which allows them to become the number one producer of multiple products like millet bananas lemons limes mangoes ginger chickpeas milk butter fennel jute and you have good food of the spices alone come from india speaking of which 75 percent find the staples roti chapati and naan in the north oh. idli and dosa in the south and everybody oh. eats rice the more commonly commercial oh. foods that we in the west grew up knowing like samosas, tikka masala, tandoori. Oh! My favorite India dish, palak paneer. These usually come from the what northern regions of India. Mm, seriously, India, you took spinach and made it fat. I love you guys. Otherwise, the West is mostly known for their chutneys and pickled foods, as well as beef, since there's a high number of Muslims and Christians. The South uses a lot I love of chicken Cobra tikka masala with like fucking like naan bread. Sambras, rasams, and tutus. And the East is known for having the best desserts. Like Onion barges is oh. Rasgula, or shondesh. Speaking of which, India is so diverse and complex that sometimes even Indian people need translators when going to different states. It's really? About to get ten times more confusing in about three, two, one. That would be Justin so Turner weird being in your own country. India, you can't understand people. The commonality of major differences. We are a land of belonging rather than blood. First of all, right. India has a population of about 1.3 billion Jeez. people. And it's the most country in the world after China, with about 18% oh of the world's population. About God, 1.3 billion. Oh my. We celebrate the commonality of major differences. We are a land of I want to hear what percent of the world First of all, that India is. has a population of about 1.3 billion people and is the second most populous country in the world after China with about 18% of the world's population. 18. About 72% of the country is Indo-Aryan and a quarter are Dravidian. And Holy. the majority of the remainder are Mongoloid, Asian, and other That's crazy. They also use the Indian rupee as their currency. They use the Type C, D, and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. By the way, hey. the to notes to leave the country, but you guys have sent me a lot of them for fan mail for Fan Friday videos so i don't want to go to jail again now keep in mind, wait those what that i just mentioned are incredibly general legal if they use the type c d and m it's plug outlets and they drive on the left side of the road by the way technically it's illegal for these banknotes to leave the country but you guys have sent me a lot oh of my god for fan friday videos so i don't want to go to jail 
again. Now keep in mind, those statistics <laughs> that I just mentioned are incredibly generalized. Of the Indo-Aryan and Dravidian communities, there are about 2,000 different ethno-linguistic people groups in India with about 645 district indigenous tribes, 52 major ones. So obviously we can't cover them all, but what we do know is that sure. the North is very different from the South. For one, the North mostly speaks in languages that are all related to the Indo-Aryan branch with languages like Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, and Gujarati, whereas right. the South speaks a completely unintelligible Dravidian branch with languages like Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, and Kannada. <laughs> Canada. Otherwise, there's also <laughs> pockets of Sino-Tibetan and Austro-Asiatic languages spoken in the far north and east. Wait, so how do they all, like, communicate with each other? Great question! Although it's yeah. not an official language, there are 22 recognized national languages, and of these, two are the most prevalent, taught in schools and used by government officials, Hindi and English. And very often, these two are, like, mixed mid-sentence. It's weird. Don't be surprised. I thought Punjabi is one of, like, the most common languages in India. Is it not? If you hear someone speaking Hindi and then suddenly finishing off in English, it's like Tapa good to bigalas versus it was like this and I was like trying to like why are you even trying to do that? I know, right? And the washing machine, I told them, and but I said when you get the a bob. Oh, that is trippy. Now, of course, let's discuss the one thing that goes hand in hand with India, Hinduism. About 80% That's of trippy. Is Hindu or at least part of the Hindu practicing community. Now we don't have time to explain everything about the tenets and multi-layered philosophies and practices of Hinduism. If you want to know, just talk to a Hindu person. But basically, one thing you do need to know is that Hindu-driven ideologies pretty much dominate most of life in India, everything from family to business. You will right. see colorful, mesmerizing shrines, temples, statues, and rituals being performed everywhere, even in public. On the Bharat Mata, the mother of India, statues are everywhere. She's like the symbol wow. of India. The largest Hindu pilgrimage, the Kumela, happens every three years, rotating between four cities in which the adherents bathe in the Ganges River and enjoy a massive festival with tens of millions of people. Like, seriously, you can practically see it happening from space. Now, a controversial what? topic in Hinduism would be the caste system, which is basically a belief that people are born into a socio economic life that they are destined to serve into. Today, however, this right. is more fluid and loose from what it used to be from a long time ago. And thanks to economic reforms, anybody with enough drive can kind of move up the social ladder regardless of birth. Nonetheless, India is home to every cool. major religion in the world, even a few Jews, including the B'nai Menashe, an indigenous group that claimed to be one of the lost tribes of Israel. In fact, Judaism and Christianity actually had a head start in India way before it even kicked off in Europe. As tradition holds, Cochin or Malabar Jews migrated around 1000 BC to trade during the times of King Solomon. And in 5380, Thomas the Apostle of Jesus arrived in what is now the state of Kerala to establish the first church in India. Today, most Christians are found in the southwest and far east Seven Sisters regions. India also holds the highest population of Sikhs, Jains, and Zoroastrians, mostly found in the north, and the second largest Muslim population in the world after Indonesia. Most Muslims are populated around the northwest areas by Pakistan or in the east by Bangladesh. Oh, and don't forget the Buddhists. In fact, Buddhism actually started. Oh in my India. God! Today, the Dalai Lama even. There's so much going on in India. Like, th th there's actually so much information in this episode. It's refuge in in the state of Assam. Oh, that was a lot of information. Ah! Mm. Okay, so by now you can probably get a grasp of how incredibly mixed and diversified India's population is, but what exactly holds Very. the country together? Well, for one, you kind of have to understand Indian history, which will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, Indus Valley, Maurya and Gupta empires, Southern empires, Golden Age, Middle Kingdoms, a ton of new religions come flocking in. Really rich and cool Sultan, history. The South became the Vijayanagara Empire, the Mughal Empire starts, British East India Company, direct British rule, nationalist movements, independence, republic, economic liberalization in 1991 and here we are today <laughs> vagina <laughs> India used to be made up of around 500 smaller royal princely states, and when the British came in, they kind of Wait, 500? such a huge population. Although India oh is a God. democratic federal republic and the largest democracy in the world, the old royal families still exist today, and although they have no political power, they hold high positions of influence in their communities across India. So today, technically, you could meet someone that would be considered an Indian prince or princess. Nonetheless, the is is that like? Is that like a bit like the UK, how like our royal family don't really have that much power? Uh, but I think they have power over the parliament. It's just they don't use it. And the parliament has all the power. Is it, is it along the same lines as that? The biggest thing that really united Indians in the past two centuries would probably be their hatred of British rule. It was kind of like, well, oh, oh sick. Not cool. Yep. What do you say you and I work together in a, end this thing? Essentially, one good thing you could say that came out of imperialism was that it kind of stopped all the internal squabbling and unified the groups towards one common goal, to get rid of imperialism. Today, Indians are just proud to be Indian. I mean, a Tamil soccer player can get cheered on by a Rajasthani. A Punjabi pop star can sell out tickets in Orissa. Speaking of which, all Indians love yeah. movies and music. India has the second largest film industry in terms of volume, pumping out nearly 2,000 films per year. Surprisingly, Nigeria pumps out more. However, the box office revenues gross out- Wait, what? Wait, I want to see like the list of like movie pr uh, productions per country. 
Wait, so so India they pump out two thousand movies a year, and Nigeria pumps out more. Speaking of which, all Indians love movies <laughs> and music. What? India has the second largest film industry in terms of volume, pumping out nearly 2,000 films per year. Surprisingly, Nigeria pumps out more. How? Its revenue is grossed out at only about $2 billion annually compared to Hollywood at over $10 billion. But still, it's impressive. It's and not bad. Like, it's not just Bollywood, but it's also Tollywood, Gollywood, Kollywood, Pollywood, and so on. There's like 20 different woods in India. Oh, and like Jesus. every movie in India has at least one scene where everybody breaks out in song and there's almost always a happy ending. Unfortunately, mainstream <laughs> media has also put an aesthetic stream on many of the people he's just spoiled every movie obsession to be light or fair skinned causing people to go so far as to buy skin bleaching products some other controversies include things like illiteracy being an issue in many parts of the country especially in the rural areas but right. I mean, come on when your country has literally hundreds of different writing systems go figure i mean give them a break i know you guys the indian geography have asked me to bring awareness to the fact that india does unfortunately have some of the highest rates of human trafficking and child slavery the government oh, is shit. trying to crack down and culture is slowly being reformed but for now it's a sad reality that still does exist wow hey, RGN, we talk about the good and the bad i'm just saying otherwise sports do definitely tie well you may as well talk about the good and the bad because it's a ge it's a ge geography video about a whole entire country you want to know you know near near to everything together as well especially cricket the national sport even though they also used to do really well in field hockey india also has a lot of their own indigenous sports like dopkel in assam bull racing in kerala in suknar rod pushing in mizoram and malakamba the strange pole yoga gymnastics thing in the whoa south. Course, yeah people what people the from india or of indian descent might include people like siddhartha gautama or the buddha mahavir ashoka the great Prithviraj chauhan arangzeb shivaji of the maratha empire mahandas or mahatma gandhi indira gandhi subhash chanda bose jawahar Nehru, Rabindranath Tagore, C.V. Raman, Satyendra Nath Bose, Bhagat Singh, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, Shah Rukh Khan, Amitabh Bachchan, Amir Khan, Salman Khan, Priyana Chopra, Ben Kingsley, Sundar Pichai. Wait, Satya what was the bracket? Salman Khan, Priyana Chopra, Ben uh. Kingsley, Sundar Pichai, Satya Narayana Nadella, A.R. Raman, Sachin Tendulkar, and Mahendra Singh Dhoni. There's also literally millions of other famous people I missed out on. If you yeah, want to mention them, please I can imagine. In the comment section below. Mate, Use India it. has 1.3 billion people. There's, <laughs> there's definitely shitloads. In the meantime, we got to finish this info marathon, shall we? Now, no surprise, India is huge and therefore has a huge international outreach when it comes to diplomacy to almost everyone except their immediate neighbors. First of all, countries with large population percentages of Hindus and Indians like Fiji, Guyana, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, Mauritius and Malaysia typically stay close to India's roster of go-to friends. They enjoy cordial Aye. relations with trade. Now, the UK may have left on a sour note, but they still have a lot of ties to their former colonizer in terms of business and tourism. India is still part of the Commonwealth, not Commonwealth realm, there's a difference, and the UK has over 1.5 million citizens of Indian descent. As mentioned in the China episode, China is kind wow, of- Wow, that's like quite Indian. a lot. Only here that is actually quite a lot because the UK, we only you have like what isn't it like 70 million people so the fact that pretty much 2 million that's that, that's a Do fucking with you a massive ratio friend as drama still hasn't subsided in regards to the territory conflicts now when it comes to the u.s things started kind of sour back in the 70s during the indo-pak war of 1971 when the u.s sided with pakistan their arch nemesis today relations have cooled off mostly the u.s supports india's move towards democracy and is a key ally in the military conflicts in the middle east when it comes to their best friends however most of the indians i talked to have said russia and bhutan russia because during the indo-pak wars russia came in and supported them and ever since then Wait. each country has held a high position of respect for the other especially as wait, wait 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 i could be wrong right but russia but i i swear like i swear india has problems with china and china's close to russia and india's also close to russia normally that doesn't happen am i am i right with that or no global superpowers bhutan and india signed a treaty of friendship almost immediately after independence the two countries have shared interests and a currency pegged system as well bhutan even supported the annexation of their cousins in the sikkim state into india as it gave a nice buffer of land from china's stake to their claim in conclusion you will not find anywhere else on earth like india thousands and millions of people inhabiting a colorful majestic green slightly gritty at times slab of earth blessed and cursed in so many ways yet wonderfully harmonized mostly in a unity unlike anywhere else it's a very juicy end, country that's india <laughs> ah! stay tuned indonesia really really good video i actually enjoyed that one a lot i love learning about india honestly the country is just so rich and there's just so much about it if you guys enjoyed it make sure you leave a thumbs up subscribe if you guys got any recommendations to any videos you want me to react to let me know in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video